We are currently in Union Island. I'm with Toby, Toby, Toby Weiss from Charter and Sail. And today we're going to tell you a little bit about how to launch your kite on a boat. in preparation for your next trip on the boat. A little disclaimer, it can be a bit tricky to launch your kite from the boat. It is very useful if somebody already has the experience. So make sure you talk to your skipper before doing this. And then there's a few safety things to keep in mind. First... So these are just a few disclaimers. If I forgot any, I might cut them in later. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So, Let's start with the first thing, and that's the bar. The space on a boat is limited. Even though we're on a Lagoon 52, one thing you could do is walk around the boat, but that can be a little bit messy, and it's the classic way. Maybe your line gets stuck. So it's the easiest to do this with two persons. Two persons yes. I'm gonna unroll the lines over here on the floor. Make sure they don't tangle up too much. And Toby is going to assist me later on with splitting the lines and making sure we got them in the right order. So I'm trying to do a little bit of a circle here. Once we get to the end of the bar, Toby is going to use his hands to split the lines, just like he would do on the beach. And I'm going to roll up the bar to make sure we don't have lines flying everywhere. Then you just continue rolling. Um, let's say that the lines are a little bit twisted and you're having trouble splitting them. Use your free hand, so Toby's right hand now, to prepare the lines a little bit, move the knots forward, and then it should be smooth sailing from there on. Good, yeah. And then you get to the end of the bar, and what you'll see is in your hand, you're going to have all the lines ready to go. Now it's very important that with these lines you don't move around, don't twist your hands. If this gets tangled, then most likely the rest will get tangled. So what we'll do now is Toby will take the bar in his right hand and he's not going to let go of that bar or from the lines in the left hand. I will go out and prepare the kite. So we move to the other side of the boat. Um, why on this side there is no stairs so there's nothing that you can get tangled in or the lines can get tangled in we've added a little leash over there this is where we will attach the bar later on so all the power of the bar or from the kite will go straight onto there you have the safety leash on there as well so worst case scenario you just pull the safety the kite's gonna flag out and you're safe um, what I'll do now, Toby still has the lines over here. I'm going to unroll this kite. And then the next step is to find the, the lines. It's very important to look that the tip doesn't go through the bridle. So the bridle should be clear of the tips. Let's start attaching. And that is four. I'll just do one last check to make sure that everything is nice and tight. For now, I'm just gonna put this behind in a clear way. And then we start opening the, well, searching for the inflation. There. Do not connect the pump leash. Uh, Toby will hold on to the kite, so we do not need the pump leash. So at the moment, Toby is still holding on to all the lines, making sure that they don't tangle. I'll continue pumping and the kite will open up. You might have noticed as well, but before we started this entire sequence, I already put my harness on. I won't need it straight away, but just in case something goes wrong, Make sure you have your harness on so you can jump in and take over or act if needed. I'll take the bar again. 
Make sure that it's not too loose. Follow Toby down. So it's always very important to connect at least one power line to the boat. And what we want is that the kite drifts away from the boat. And that's why we actually connected this side, because if we let this line slide, it will always flag out and it will move to the side of the boat. Toby went a few times around here, and that's for the reason that this will make it easier for him to hold on to the line. If you would only go around once, there is a chance that the kite gets some power and the line will cut into your hand and it will be hard to hold. So, what we're going to do now is slowly let the kite drift to the side. In the meantime, I'm going to make sure he has enough line in his hand. Then I unroll, close the sides, and then I'm going to hook it in on the side over there. Start with hooking it in, make sure to close it properly and then you use the safety leash to hook it in. So right now comes the moment where Toby will slowly start releasing this line and we're going to make sure that the mass of this line slowly releases. Don't just let go of the bar at an instant and let it fly out and hope that everything goes right. It might tangle a bit, so if you slowly release it, you can control everything and the power will be directed to the side of the boat. At the same time, keep an eye out on the kite to make sure it doesn't do any funky things. Toby released. Right now, I could just go hands-free. So the line's on twist, everything is safe. I'm slowly gonna steer the kite to the side. And this is actually the moment where I can go grab a coffee. So that was actually quite a nice coffee. <laughs> I'll be ready for my session now. I'm gonna make sure my board is ready, but not yet in the water. Kite is still on the side. I'll sit close to it. Release the quick release attach it to myself. At this moment, it might be nice if the wind's stronger or if you're uncertain that Toby is holding on to my harness. I'll take the leash off. I can slowly steer up my kite. Be very careful that you don't steer it too far because you're on a boat. <laughs> the left side is not free. So keep it at 45 degrees. Um, this is the moment, actually, where I'll lose the mic. There you go. I will power up my kite. Put the board in the water. Usually you jump in the water now and... Woo! Okay, Steven is coming back. Um, bringing the kite back to the boat, it's not super easy, it's only for advanced uh, kite surfers. So As Toby already mentioned, this is only for really advanced riders, as there are so many things that can go wrong. For most riders, it's going to be a lot easier if you take a 5 to 10 meter long rope, a thick rope that is, hang it on the back of the cat so it hangs downwind. You come riding up towards it, you grab it, put your kite on the side either nine o'clock or three o'clock and pull your safety after which you pull yourself into the boat. Then you can start connecting yourself back to the, way, to the boat in the following fashion. Okay, so I put the kite on the side, I depowered the kite so I don't have too much power. Toby will usually still be assisting me, holding me on the back so I don't fall off the cat. Then we take the safety leash and attach it onto your leash, unhook, release your safety and then we're going to put it on the clamp on the outside. And this is how you can go for your brake. 
packing the kite on a boat so it stays dry usually isn't that easy. Most of the times it makes more sense just to pull the safety so the kite flags out, roll your lines in a self-rescue way so the kite comes back to the boat. Then you disconnect your lines, you can roll your kite and that's it. Another way would be if you're further downwind and can't make it back to the boat that the dinghy actually go, goes and grabs your kite from either 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock and then you can roll up your lines and also um, have your kite packed away. The last one, and this is something I wouldn't recommend for most riders, only the very advanced riders, is to land it on the front deck as I'll show in the next video. Ride in slightly upwind of the boat because you're going to drift downwind. 10 meters before your kite reaches the boat, you'll want to sit down in the water and body drag the rest of the part in. From here, you're really going to have to pinpoint Guess with the wind where your kite is going to be. Make sure you're far enough away from the jib lines, which are on the side of the boat, and keep your kite low. The skipper will give you directions if you need to be more upwind or downwind. Once the skipper lands the kite, he'll take it up onto the boat, and from there on, he can go and deflate it, and you can start rolling your lines. Again, this is not a very easy way to land your kite and there is a very high chance that your kite ends up in the jib lines. So before you start doing this, make sure you're in full control unless you want to fold your kite around the boat and not have a kite to kite on for the rest of the week. Thank you so much for watching this SA Mask class on how to launch your kite and land your kite on a boat. This was in collaboration with Charter and Sail who were so kind to invite us onto this trip we made a nice video about this trip. You can find it right over there. If you want to know more about Charter and Sail and what they're doing, what they offer, check their link in the description. I might be doing some essay, or no, I not might. I will be doing some essay masterclasses with them. Very excited to de for that. Thank you very much for watching. And hope to see you soon. Ciao.